<laughs> Just believe and receive, buddy. <laughs> God loves you. <laughs> oh, 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 dung filled Canadian talk show hosts. Bravo, bravo. Oh, God loves you. God loves you. <laughs> Love. Ah, hello. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I just... Uh, oh, never, never, never ceases to be entertaining. Uh, never ceases to be amusing. Talk show hosts. <laughs> Scripturally inept talk show hosts. But enough, enough, enough of that. Let, let, uh, uh, let the children play their little games. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Ah. Uh, um, love. I was gonna, I was thinking about calling this video What's Love Got to Do With It? But that, that, you take this love. This love. We're gonna be addressing love in this video today. Uh, please get your authorized version of the scriptures and please read along with me in the scriptures that we will be considering today. You need to read along with me because guess what? Guess what? Guess what? I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. And you need to see what we're looking at. It, it, it would behoove you to see what we're looking at. Okay? It would. This is not going to be as in-depth as I once thought it were, because it really doesn't need to be. Um, because love, there, are, there is actually all kinds of love when you think about it. There is, for example, the love that is offered to you by Christianity. There's a love that doesn't judge, a love that has no requirements, okay? All right? And a love that doesn't warn you of sin okay but then there is a love that is actual scriptural love that warns you about the cliff that you're about to dive head first off of and this is what we're going to be considering today while we're doing this video while we're going through this you are going to notice one glaring omission what's that we're not going to be reading anything at all from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Well, Brad, that's a chapter on love. No. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. See, in your Bible, they've taken out charity and replaced charity with love. Okay? Now, as some half went a little while ago, lied to you pretty horrifically and tried to tell you that charity, which is self-sacrifice, actually means liberty. That, that, that was, that was bad. That was bad. Charity is self-sacrifice. Liberty, you could be equated onto just that. Uh, having liberty to do things, you know, all things are lawful for you. Love, okay, affection, a verb, whatever you want, whatever you want, okay, but Here's the thing. There are aspects of charity within love. Yes, there is. Of course. How many of you are married? Okay. Need I say anything more? You're a saint. You're married unto the Lord. Okay. Self-sacrifice. However, you can have self-sacrifice charity and have no love. Perfect example. People looking to do all these good works in order to make themselves look good, minus love. Also, a good scriptural example of love with no charity, Ammon and Tamar. Now, some of you, you cute little pond scum out there, would be, well, Brad, that's actually talking about lust. I, okay, I agree. But what say the scripture? Says that Ammon or Ammon loved Tamar. Okay, it does not use the word lust. Again, there are differences. You got it. See, this is what I'm getting at. Well, there are aspects of one within the other. 
love and charity are two totally different things, even though the one can encompass the other and vice versa. The same with charity and liberty. There is charity within liberty and liberty within charity. They themselves are two totally different things. And it is heretical and evil, especially when you're trying to do it to justify something that comes from Rome. Okay, just believe and receive there, buddy. Okay, especially when you're trying to justify something that comes from Rome, then it, it, that's very abhorrent. That's disgusting. Okay, that is why we are not going to be referencing at all 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Because when you take out charity and put love in there, well, hey, you know, that, that, that Bible, the message. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. See, when you take out what God has said and put in what man wants, they go, oh, you can justify anything. You can justify anything. Ah, uh, like you're saved by faith through grace. No, it's by grace through faith. Ain't you a sweetie pie? <laughs> Ain't you a sweetie pie? <laughs> First, before we get any further, loves, loves, we've addressed this before, we're going to be addressing this again. I'll give you, I will, I will, I will give you a thousand dollars of money I don't have if any one of you, anywhere, can find for me within the authorized version of the scriptures. I will give you a thousand dollars of money I do not have if you can produce the verse for me from the authorized version of the scriptures. Oh, and by the way, the Apocrypha is not inspired scripture. Nice try, Catholic. Show me where it says God loves you. Show it to me. And I'll give you a thousand dollars of money I don't have. Okay? Scripture says nowhere that God loves you. People like the most popular place where people will go to in scripture to with this God loves you. There are other places like in Corinthians, First Corinthians and whatnot, and also in Romans. But the most popular the, the two most popular verses amongst the lost are Matthew seven, verse one, judge not that ye be not judged, okay? Uh, which James Hetfield, that devil, you know, judge not lest ye be judged yourself. Okay. Uh, they the lost world knows that one, and of course, John 3, 16. And they go to that to prove that God loves you. Uh, it says loved, gave, all past tense. Proverbs 7. Proverbs 7. Loves appears twice in the authorized version of the scripture. In two different contexts. One involving the harlot. Mystery of Babylon the Great. Mother of harlots. And abominations of the earth. You know, God loves you. And then in Song of Solomon, which is a picture of Solomon and love towards his bride, more so his Gentile bride, meaning also about the body of Christ, which is Jew and Gentile. But in Proverbs 7, Proverbs 7, it only appears twice. You look on King James Bible online, it will tell you that loves appears three times. No. Loves the third time that's in, I believe they say Psalm 45, and they say verse 1. Uh, no, it isn't. It's in the heading right under the chapter thing. It's in loves, and Saul is in this, not the actual verse itself, okay? That, that, that's, watch that. But in Proverbs 17, uh, 7, oh, let's see, verses 10 on to verse 17. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot, and su subtle of heart. Hmm. This is, I truly believe, is talking about your mother there, sweetie pie, uh, Rome. Okay? <laughs> ain't you, sweetheart? <laughs> okay, enough of that. Enough of that. I, I ain't going to light your fires, okay? Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. 
So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, Love bomb him, right? I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. Oh, I'm going to love bomb you with all my loves. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt, of the world. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Verse 18. Come, go to bed with the harlot. Rome. Yeah, go right ahead. <laughs> now, this is this atheist guy I'm aware of. His name is Dave Murphy. Maybe I ought to talk to him and get some of what he's smoking. Come, let us fill our, fill our, come let us take our fill of love into the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. First appearance of the word loves. In context with the whore, a harlot, you know, Rome, Mystery Babylon, who's love bombing this guy who's void of understanding, departing from evil. Second appearance and final is Solomon, Song of Solomon 7, verse 12 is what we want. But let's get a little context here. Verses, oh, 6 on to 12. How fair and how pleasant art thou, O love for delights. This thy stature is like to a palm tree, and thy breasts to clusters of grapes. The body of Christ, the body of Christ, the the bride of the Lamb, the bride of Christ, okay? <laughs> I know, I'm the ugliest woman you ever seen. But we, the body of Christ, are likened unto the bride of Christ, okay? you got to remember that. And eventually, you know, we will be literally the bride of Christ, okay? And that's in the book of Revelation and whatnot. Anyway, I said, I will go up to the palm tree. I will take hold of the bows thereof. Now also thy breast shall be as clusters of the vine, and the smell of thy nose like apples, and the roof of thy mouth like the best wine for my beloved, that goeth down sweetly, causing the lips of those that are asleep to speak. Awake from your sleep, O sleeper. Okay? <coughs> I am my beloved's, and his desire is toward me, the body of Christ. His desire is toward us, those who are saved. Okay? Come, my beloved, let us go into the field. Let us lodge in the villages. Let us get up early to the vineyards. Let us see if the vine flourish. Now, no use of vineyard. Vine flourishing. The Lord Jesus, he is the vine. We are the branches, okay? Whether the tender grape appear and the pomegranates bud forth, there will I give thee my loves. So loves appears twice in Scripture, Two different contexts. You get a false loves with the harlot Rome and all her daughters, you know, you antinomious twits and Catholics and stuff like that, okay? And then you have the genuine loves that is associated between Christ and his bride, okay? Nowhere, 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 nowhere in Scripture does it say God loves you. Nowhere. Okay? And nowhere does it say that God loves, present tense, the Christ-rejecting sinner. We, we've talked about this on many occasions. Okay? So, when you have someone coming around telling you God loves you, think about that. Which God are they talking about? You know, the three-person one, right? With the God, the number one God in the middle, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, that... that that was quite a leap, uh, quite a jump there, brother dear. <laughs> I love you. Okay? All right? So, when they say God loves you, oh, their love has, you know, to the Christ-rejecting sinner. You know, yeah. Doesn't judge. Has no requirements. Doesn't get angry. Hmm. Okay? Doesn't, doesn't confront you in sin, but pacify. Don't worry about it. 1 John chapter 3. Let's get into it. Now then we'll call that an introduction. How's that? Okay. You know, it, it, it's like, you know, the love that Christianity offers 
I want nothing to do with. I, I want nothing to do with the love that Christianity offers. Just like this fake grace that these twits, these dung-filled people like to give you. That is not the grace of God. <laughs> okay? Their grace is a license to sin. Their grace is lasciviousness. Okay, it's not the grace of God. Okay, you you people want to believe that nonsense? You go right ahead. You go right ahead and up the dosage. First John chapter three, verses thirteen on to verse eighteen. Now, again, they are of the world, therefore they speak of the world. We're going to read that today. Okay, there is a love that proceeds actually from two wisdoms. Think about this. A love that comes from, from heaven, from our Lord, which is first peaceable, easy to be entreated. And then there is a love that comes from that other wisdom, which is earthly, sensual, devilish. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. The wages of sin is death. Okay, And why wouldn't someone just absolutely love the grotesque, dung-ridden garbage that certain talk show hosts purport and defend. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you sweetheart. It's you pretty boy. <laughs> anyway. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God. Okay? Now, stop. Verse 13. World hate you. Okay? You know, for example, the antinomianist pond scum, they're of the world. They speak of the world. And they offer a love of the world in the guise of this joke called Christianity. Therefore, you know, people most of the time with a brain anyway can figure it out, but whatever. Okay? So, we see right away in contrast here, in this context, it starts in verse 13 about the world hates you. Okay? And then in verse 16, hereby perceive we, saved people, the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. There's a good example of charity. Okay? Charity, self-sacrifice, laying our lives down for the brethren. All right? And look at verse 17. Key. But whoso hath this world's good, good, and seeth his brother have need, and suffereth his bowels, and shutteth, excuse me, his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? Verse 18. My little children, let us not love in word, Neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Hmm. You know, many people will say, I love you. But, you know, love is proven more so when it's demonstrated by action. Okay? But then again, you got to be careful. There are a lot of people that will try to demonstrate this love which is actually hate. Okay? 1 Corinthians 5. Here is an example of what we're speaking of. Here is the example of the love that Christianity offers to you. Okay? 1 Corinthians 5, verses 1 on to verse 8. How many of you have heard about this kind of stuff? Okay? It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. Such fornication as is not so much as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. This was not his mother. If it were his mother, his actual biological mother, uh, I'm I'm one of those sticklers who say believe that the Lord would have told us. So it's his stepmother. Yeah, disgusting. Verse two. We've we've touched on this before, but again. You're only as relevant to the people you're trying to reach other than the body of Christ as your latest video. Okay? <laughs> and ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned 
that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. Christianity, Christians, you know, not all of them, not all of them. Some do it to extreme crazy measures, but generally, generally, especially with the phallus house attending Christian, that's like, we're, we're not judging you. You're in this grotesque sin that could poison other people by us validating it's okay by saying, come to us. This is when you need the church. This is when you need to come to us. When you're No, 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 no. no. See, they were puffed up. Hey, look at how loving we are. We're not judging you even though that's clearly disgusting. Hey, Abedelech! During the uh, patriarchal period, and knew enough, because the law is written in man's hearts, uh, knew that having another man's wife was not, it was no bueno. Okay? Here's a guy who's got his father's wife. And yet, you have the Corinthians, the Corinthian saints, in error, saying, you know, like, hey, we love you unconditionally. Now, Saved people love each other unconditionally, yes. But see, what kind of love is that when you're saying, hey, come to us when you're in this sin, and in us saying that to you, that's when you need to come to all of us. We're in fact validating. Ye have not and have not rather mourned, but we're puffed up. This is when you need us. Look at how pious, look at how righteous we are. Because we're just like, come to us. Come in. Come in. Let, let's you little sweetheart. You little sweetie pie. Yeah, sugar britches, huh? It's like, come in. Come in. Oh, that's when, yeah. Thus validating it. What does Paul say? Verse 3. For I verily as absent in body, but present in lowercase as spirit, have woo judged already. And you know, there are Christians out there, uh, you put this into a modern context, who would be, uh, well, we're not judging them. I, I don't think that's right, but I'm not going to judge you. That's when you need to come to church so you could hear the word from the Vatican. I, I, I mean, uh, the word of the little G God from a Bible that they don't read out of. And they don't believe. Hmm. For I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present, concerning him that hath so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together in my Lord Kesef's spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such an one unto Satan, for the destruction of the flesh, that the Lord Kesef's spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Christianity, when this kind of thing happens. I've heard of it, okay? I've seen things like that with my own eyes, not being present, but seeing how Christians will do that. It's like, okay, they're in this grotesque sin that could infect others. Why? Because they validate it with Oh, we're not puffed up, you know, we're, you know, we're not. See, he says, and you're puffed up. But all the while, they were like, oh, hey, look at us. We're not judging you. Come on, this is when you need us. Then who, what, when do you need us more than when you're in a grotesque sin that can infect other people by us validating it? See how this works? Verse 6, your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? And say there's a novice in your little fellowship. And you're allowing some guy or some woman who's involved in something that grotesque. And you're like, come on, this, come on, let's let's go through scriptures together. Let's uh, let's all get together. And you got a, no a novice there. It's like, well, okay. All right. You're you're bringing you're being look at how loving you're being to him. Or her. So, what am I? What is there to fear, right? Hey, if I mess up, yeah, yeah, you little sweetie pie, yeah. If I mess up, don't worry about it. 
Because I just saved myself because I believe, right? So what is there to fear? What is there to fear when sin is made light of? In the name of love. Now you're going to be cute and say, love isn't mentioned there. You're right, it isn't. But what's being portrayed? Huh? huh? They're allowing this individual in there. They were aware of it. But they were puffed up and not mourning. And allowing him to come in. Pride. Look at how righteous we are. It's like that one idiot. It's like, you know, boasting about how uh, spiritual he is because he loves Satan and forgives Satan. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, okay. Reminds me of the talk show hosts, host, hostess, <laughs> uh, God, uh, Martin Richling. Okay. Anyway. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? So, you know, in Romans chapter 12, okay, Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2, um, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world. Love is love, Right? Hey, you're, you're sleeping with your mother in law, your stepmother. That's gross. But hey, I'm not judging you because hey, love is love. That ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, the Corinthians were saints. Not all of them, but they're, they're, he's addressing the saints. You know, those who have, were crucified with Christ. Okay? But they were really messed up. Okay? They were really messed up. So, again, a babe, a novice, seeing this. No understanding, departing from evil, but rather embracing it. A little leaven, leaven left the whole lump. Then you come up with some heresy like free grace or antinomianism or Calvinism or whatever ism you want to uh, take down the, uh, the aisle. Okay? Purge out therefore the old leaven that ye may be a new lump as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Not with the old leaven. Not with old leaven. Not as the old man. Neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Now, and also too, if you want, you can go ahead and read the rest of the chapter. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Okay, now we've covered this recently, but we're covering it again. Because it's what we're talking about. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 on to verse 11. Now, Paul is addressing what we just read in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay? The Corinthian saints, at, upon Paul's prompting and warning, okay, they're like, oh, yeah, we, we should get rid of this guy. And they did. And then you read in, uh, what is it, 2 Corinthians 7, about clearing of themselves. You know, it's like, hey, we, we repent of this, man. Okay? All right? We, we shouldn't have done that. So they got the message. Okay? But, sufficient, verses 6 on to verse 11, sufficient to such a man is this punishment which was inflicted of many. Punishment. Okay? So that contrary wise... Ye ought rather to forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. Sorrow of the world that could lead to death. Godly sorrow that worketh repentance. Not to be repented of. Okay? Wherefore, verse 8, I beseech you that ye would confirm your love toward him. Do you see the contrast? 
See, they were demonstrating a love that wasn't judging them in light of clear scriptural infraction, clear transgression, a clear danger to the rest of the body of Christ if they continue to allow that into there. And they were calling that love. You're right. It doesn't say that it was love in the text. You're right. But you put that in context with what's happening today. We look, we love you. God, we're not judging you. That's when you need us. A false love. Where true love was, you get out of here, man. You get out. You, you can hurt other people with what you're doing. You, you, get, you go to the Lord and you too. You and the Lord get that figured out. Okay? Go. Get out. Uh, where was that? Uh, verse 8. Wherefore I beseech you that ye would confirm your love toward him. Kicking someone out in light of something like that? See, now to Christianity, they, they would call that hate. What's say The scripture. Scripture calls that love. Brother, dear, dear, dear brother, you are not demonstrating love when you are intermingling with people, number one, who you know are in error, and number two, who are deceiving people. That, that, that's not a demonstration of God's love. Just like the grace that the antinomianist offers is not, not the grace of God. They're two different things. <laughs> one is day and one is night. Okay? True love. A true love that is willing to separate for the, for the benefit of others that don't get messed up because of what you're doing. But see, it is demonstrated as love because so that contrary wise, he ought rather to forgive him and comfort him. They, they went gung-ho. They, they did, obviously. We're seeing the evidence. But this is also just suggesting that they, they may have been a little too... You know, when, when you, you know when a brother repents, and you can see that fruit, that the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto righteousness. We're going to read that today, okay? That comes from chastisement from the Lord. Um, there, there comes a time when you can see it, it's like, all right, you, you, the Lord, obviously have been doing some talking. Uh, obviously, the Lord and you have, um, y y yeah. Then it's like, okay, that's when you back off. That's when you have that mercy. That's when you show that compassionate side that love is. That is there in the true love of Christ, yes. But see, the love that is offered to you from Christianity is void of this, but only there for those of us who want to tell the truth. Those of us through the scripture expose their false love. Oh, and then they have this unsavory aspect of love. But see, they're not offering you love at all. <laughs> it's like, you know, liking this under the dudes who say the hell's not real or not eternal. That's hatred. The love that they were showing in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Hey, you, hey there, you little sweetheart. You go ahead and say all that you want about 1 Corinthians. Proving there again, just trying to justify your satanic doctrine, you little sweet pie. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. <laughs> there, there's a nice warm bed waiting for you eventually there, sweetheart. Okay? So let's continue. For to this end also did I write, that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient to in all things. And, of course, Catholics like to twist this one up about justifying their uh, Jesuit priest. No. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. Okay? He's meaning for Christ's sake. The Catholic will take that and say that Paul, you know, was another Christ like the Jesuit priest or some nonsense like that. Watch out for that. Okay, you wicked Catholics. Okay? Verse 11. Let's, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. 
And see, Christianity wants to keep you ignorant of what Satan does by disguising hate with love. A love that Christianity calls true. But it is not true love at all. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. See, this Christ, this uh, uh, three-person God, which is not the true God at all, uh, <laughs> they, the Christianity is offering you this teddy bear who's never angry, who has no requirements, who doesn't judge, loves the one who rejects him unconditionally, and he's just like this big teddy bear. It's not the Jesus of Scripture. Mark chapter 10, verses 17 on to 22. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master! And um, <laughs> later on in this same chapter, you see the contrast of the rich young ruler who had eyes to see, but called him good master, and the blind guy who said, Jesus, thou son of David. Don't miss that. And we're not going to go on that because that's not the focus of this video. Let's continue. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. And see the rich young ruler didn't have eyes, he could see, but he didn't have eyes to see. He only saw a genie in a bottle, if anything. Okay, whereas the man who, uh, let's read that. Okay, uh, verse 48 and 49. This is the blind guy, okay. Uh, verse 46. And there came to Jer Jericho, and they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, Blind Bar, Bar Timaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. Okay, and let's skip to verse 48 and 49. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more, a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David. Acknowledging to Jesus that he is the son, son of David, meaning the king of the Jews, God the Father, the Messiah. Okay? And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise, for he called thee. Okay? The one, the rich young ruler who had eyes to see, didn't have eyes to see. <laughs> you know, he could see visually, but he didn't have eyes to see that he was speaking to God the Father, the Mashiach, son of David. But yet the blind guy did. Don't miss that. Okay? Verse 19, Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him. Okay? Loved him. Past tense. Not as this thing that people would like to uh, contort this. See, he loves unconditionally the Christ-rejecting sinner. No. He showed him love by telling him truth. See, that's how you show our enemies love, dear saint. Not this fake, you know, love that Christianity offers you. No. True love... And Jesus beholding him loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest. See, this, the Jesus of Scripture is going to confront that one thing you lack. Does it all the time. That's the true Christ. That's the true Jesus. The true God, our Father. And see, the Jesus that is offered to you by the whore, Roman Catholicism, Satan and his church, and all the myriad of his daughters, we see exhibited in 1 Corinthians 5, 1 and 2, puffed up, 
not judging, not mourning over sin. No requirements, not any. Now, remember, those of you Christians want to tie in 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, it's charity, not love. See, you take, again, take out charity and put love in there, you can justify it. Hey, love is love, right? See how that works? That heresy? It's charity. Anyway, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. Worldly stuff, man. Worldly stuff. See, dude, listen to me. Okay? You, you, you want to believe a talk show host? You want to believe them crazy jerks? Knock yourself out. Make sure you get yourself a good glass of wine and roll yourself one up. Because you're going to need it following that heresy into hell. Go right ahead. The truth is, dear friend, the Jesus of Scripture, who is God the Father, is very confronting. Jesus of the Scripture has requirements. Jesus of the Scripture gets angry. Jesus of the Scripture judges you. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And he puts his finger on that one thing you lack. Okay? Uh, what's the term? He has conditions. <laughs> he does. And the Christ that has no conditions is not the actual Jesus Christ. But see, the unconditional Jesus that is offered to you, you, you like that one. You like that one. Because, hey, like I said, you can go in your little Bible and read 1 Corinthians 13 and with the saying love, and you can justify anything, can't you? You already do. Um, John 3, John 3, okay? John 3, verses 18 unto 21. He that believeth on him is not condemned. And and uh, uh, you, you, shut up with John three sixteen. We, we the video for that uh, will be in the description box. Okay. Anyway, he that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now the the antinomianist gets this wrong because they're trying to deceive you, to guide you into hell after the body of Christ gets redeemed. What, what was their faith in? It was in Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. As what though? See, heretics will say that right there, he's talking about the death, burial, and resurrection. But yet, they didn't know about the death, burial, and resurrection. They didn't. Until it actually went, what transpired and happened. You know, uh, everyone will be ashamed because of me, you know, sh uh, strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered, okay? They they didn't know about the, uh, they weren't looking forward to the cross. See, that's what the heretic is going to tell you about verse 18. Uh, no, no, they were not aware of the cross. Even though the Lord's like, I'm going there, you know, to die by the hands of sinners. And Peter's like, this be far from you, Lord. You know, if he was, if they were looking forward to the cross, like I said, they would have been like, "I wish it wouldn't be so, Lord, but that's what you gotta do." But that, that wasn't the case. Don't fall for this lie that they were looking forward to the cross before it happened. They weren't. They they were not. Okay, go ahead. You want to believe the lie of a talk show host? Go right ahead. Okay, you want to believe Tommy and all them idiots? Fine. Go right ahead. That's not the truth. He came first offering what? The kingdom of heaven. So believe in him as king. Okay? That's what it was. Not in the fact of the death, burial, and resurrection because they didn't know about it. Okay? All right? If they did, then... <laughs> Paul was... Um, Paul was lying. What do you do with that one there? Uh, sugar britches, huh, sweetie pie? What do you do with that one? 
Oh, I won. <laughs> Let's continue. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in, believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This is the condemnation. That light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Yes, yes, those of you who just don't want to justify your sin, you, you don't like the true Jesus of Scripture. So you're willing to believe in this nonsensical, satanic counterfeit called Jesus that is offered to you by so many of the daughters of the whore. Yeah. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest, he, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be ma made manifest that they are wrought in God. Mm. John 7, verses 1 on to verse 9. After these things Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would, no walk, not, for he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence. And go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, shew thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren. Brethren? Brethren? You mean... Jesus Christ had brothers and sisters even half of course because you know uh, God was his father of course you know talking about the flesh okay you know remember Jesus Christ is come in the flesh God was manifest in the flesh God became flesh uh, you devil flesh never became God okay just Shut up. All right? All right? But yeah, Catholic, Mary was not a perpetual virgin. Um, what's in that wine they're giving you? What, 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 what's in that little cookie you guys eating? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Okay? Then Jesus said unto them, My time has not yet come. Your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. <laughs> and the Christ Jesus, the Jesus Christ offered of unto you of Christianity, generally it's like, well, I, I love it. I like your Jesus, but I don't want it because, you know, I, I, I want to live my sin, you know, you know. See, the world has, it's weird, the world has enough sense to know that there's supposed to be something different about what they call, you know, a Christian. But then again, you run into these antinomianists who do these live streams, and I'm not talking about a little sweetheart, uh, the other guys who just use profanity, justify sin all day long, talk about sexual escapades and whatnot, and then someone who's lost comes to that and is like, dude, I, I, I can get that going down to the bar. You guys are supposed to be the ones representing God? I don't think so. <laughs> okay? Okay? But see, the Christ of Scripture right there the world cannot hate you Christian because <laughs> hey you got to be like the world to win the world you justify sin there little sweetheart you sure do yeah preaching you're a little fake Jesus yeah hey, little, ain't you so cute little pretty boy little mama's boy yeah Rome <laughs> yeah the world cannot hate you but me it hateth because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil Go ye up to this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast. 
For my time is not yet full come. If I'm not mistaken, verse 8, the Bible's mess with, to turn Jesus into a liar. It says right there, um, I go not up yet. I believe some of the Bibles take out up yet, where it says I go not unto this feast. I believe so. I could be wrong. I don't think I am. But see, you take out up yet. Then when he goes, well, Jesus lied, didn't he? Well, the Greek, you, you, you can wipe with that Greek of yours. It's more for a point, <laughs> dear brother. Okay. When he had said these words unto them, he still abode in Galilee. Okay? So, verse 7. See, the Jesus offered to you of Christianity, the world might not necessarily like, because it's like, wait a minute, man. There, there's something that doesn't sound right there, so I'm going to reject it. But there again, generally, in a general sense, you know, the world won't necessarily hate the false Jesus. Even though, you know, when you, you, you approach like uh, some of the sodomites and these guys preaching this, you know, God loves you unconditionally, they, they know. It's like, wait a minute. You, you're going to tell me, you know, God's okay with what I'm doing? Well, yeah, love is love. Because love is patient, love is kind. You know, you read your First Corinthians 13 in the Bible and not the Scriptures. John 18. John 18. 33 unto 38. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again. This one in the pronunciation key has it. Uh, uh, it's Pilate. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? I, I love this. I love this little dialogue that our father, our Lord Jesus, has with Pilate. Jesus answered him, Sayest this, sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it to thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Did others tell this of, tell this you tell the tell this to you about me? Did you come up with this by yourself? What does Pilate say? Am I a Jew? Uh, no! No, he was going off what he heard. Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? <laughs> so, uh, in other words, Pilate's answering, you know, he didn't, um, yeah, of himself, because he didn't, it wasn't revealed unto Pilate, except that it was told him by those who were handing him over to be crucified. Don't, don't miss that when you go to apply that aspect with instruction and righteousness for us today when you encounter Christianity. Don't, don't lightly glib over that, okay? Jesus, <laughs> Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight then I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. There are, there are people out there who actually truly believe. They do. I've encountered them. Actually truly believe that we are in the kingdom of heaven <laughs> right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like, well, yeah, I mean, we're in the kingdom of heaven right now, aren't we, huh? Yeah. <laughs> there are people out there who actually believe that. It's it's like woo. <laughs> okay, full of water. Okay, okay. Stay away from me, bud. Okay, but but now is my kingdom not from hence. His kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, the second coming when he comes back down with us behind him. Okay. <laughs> You know, I, I, I'm trying to pr trying scripturally to prove to someone who's convinced 
that the kingdom of heaven is happening right now. Um, good luck. Good luck. Um, good luck. I've, I've scripturally, scripture with scripture, I've tried talking to people about that who truly believe that the kingdom of heaven. There are, brother. There are people today who actually believe that we're in the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> wow! Woo! <laughs> that that's that's a that's a certain kind of touch right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. But now is my kingdom not from hence, meaning it's coming at a second coming. Okay. Pilate therefore said unto him, "Art thou king then?" Jesus answered, "Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born." Again, proving about what we just read in John chapter three. It was, see, were they believing in the death, burial, and resurrection? No! They were not aware of it until it happened. Okay? Don't believe that lie. Well, what was their faith supposed to be in then? Him as king. Okay? Because he was offering the kingdom of heaven. All right? All right? The death, burial, and resurrection happened. Then, after that... Which this uh, uh, dispensation, it is finished. Our faith is and it's finished. Not like some whose faith is in their actual faith. You know, you are, you know, your, your, your salvation is in the present tense, isn't it there, sweetheart? Yeah. You got to continuously believe, right? It's like your one little uh, master, Martin Richling. Oh, and uh, dear brother, uh, you had emailed me very quickly. Okay. Uh, the people who moderate, the brethren who moderate for the channel, they don't need to come to me about anything. And if there's something that they, one of the moderators sees that they do not feel is appropriate, they have that permission to do what they will with it. They don't have to come to me. That's why they're the moderators, okay? So, just just mention it, alright? Just, just saying. Anyway, Thou sayest that I am a king, to this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. And then what does Pilate say? Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? What is truth? It standeth right in front of him. But see, sayest thou this thing of thyself? Or did others tell this tell it thee of me? But see, Pilate had enough sense. And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. Second Corinthians 11. Second Corinthians 11. Second Corinthians 11, verses 1 on to verse 4. What's going on? See, Bring in another Jesus. You bring in a totally different uh, grace that is not the grace of God. You bring in a totally different love that is not the love of God. You bring in a different salvation that is not <laughs> true salvation for us today. See, when you believe in yourself, you are your own Jesus. Think about that. You are your own God. Because you saved yourself. Sweetie pie. <laughs> yes, brethren, I'm being antagonistic. Okay, yes, I am. All right. Because I respect someone does not mean that I can that I like them at all. Okay, just just be aware of that. All right. Ah, uh, 2 Corinthians 11, verses 1 on verse 4. Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband. There's that reference again. Check your margin. Is there anything for a Song of Solomon? Anyway. That I might present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. 
But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Now, they doubt those half-twit, they're not idiots. Devils. The simplicity, just believe and receive. Okay. Oh, repentance is a work? Just like Martin said. Repentance is a work? Just like Martin said. Ain't you a sweetheart? Ain't you, ain't you a cutie pie? It's leading people to hell. Ah, and you got a hot bed waiting for you, pal. Shame too. Shame too. Anyway. For if he that cometh preacheth, preacheth another Jesus. God loves you unconditionally. Just believe and receive. That's it. Ah, repentance is going from unbelief to belief. Devils also believe in trouble, right? Okay. Prayer is a work. <laughs> Calling on the name of the Lord is a work. The backload, what's that? Oh, what's that? Backloaded works into salvation. <laughs> it's not funny. It's not funny. It's just that there, your arguments have been destroyed through Scripture. But then again, you, 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 you do, <laughs> sweetie, little sweetie pie. You use philosophy in vain to see. You're a talk show host, man. I know I said I was going to leave it alone because this is what guys like that thrive on. But it's like, you know, at the end of the day, when you're standing at the great white throne of judgment. Anyway, let's continue. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another lowercase s spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Look at verses 19 and 20. And you Christians, hmm, especially the antinomianists and their little live screams, like, everybody is welcome. Ask questions. Come on. We'll talk to anybody. We'll, we'll open ourselves up. As a whore does, because we're daughters of the whore. Okay? <laughs> For ye suffer fools gladly, because you are fools. <laughs> and seeing, your, seeing ye yourselves are wise. Paul sarcasm. For ye suffer, if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. <laughs> okay? All right. Uh, now let's skip to verses five. Or, well, it's not skip. Let's continue verses five on to verse fifteen in Second uh, Corinthians eleven. For I suppose I was not a whit behind the very chiefest apostles, but though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge. Rude in speech. I, I've I've talked with brethren about. Does this mean that Paul lacked manners or something like that? Does it mean that while in Rome he spake like a Roman? Does it mean that he spake like a sailor because that's how they would understand him unless you know he spake like they did? No. No. Preaching the true Jesus Christ who puts his finger on that one thing you lack to someone who doesn't want to accept that, who doesn't want to believe it, but wants a God who's going to uplift them in their sin. Well, how? <laughs> I'm putting tracks on cars. My wife would even attest to this. Uh, the one gal one day, uh, she, she, I don't think she knew it was me, but I was walking away. I put a track on her car, and she's like, how rude. So when he says, but though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, are we to believe that Paul lacked manners? That he even spake like, you know, like, you know, a sailor does, okay? No. Rude in speech, how? Again, when you present someone with the actual Jesus Christ, say to a Christian who believes in the fake Christ, fake Jesus, given to them by Christianity, we're, we're being rude to them. We're the ones preaching hate. Okay, aren't we? 
That's what they say. Yeah. And a stranger doth not intermeddle with their joy. Hmm. Joy in what? I wonder. But we have been throughly made manifest among you in all things. If I committed an offense in abasing myself, that ye might be exalted, because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely, I robbed other churches, bodies, not buildings, taking wages of them to do you service. And when I was present with you and wanted, I was chargeable to no man. For that which was lacking to me, the brethren which came from Macedonia supply. And in all things, I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you. And so will I keep myself. And we've discussed this before. Paul had every right, but he was doing that to show them, hey, he was the example to the Jew first, but also to the Gentile. And remember, Paul was the apostle unto us Gentiles, okay? But his example was to all the body of Christ, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, okay? As the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Wherefore, because I love you not, God knoweth. See, rude in speech. Rude in speech. Preaching the Christ that is contrary to your flesh as opposed to the Jesus that is for your flesh. Oh, and you guys would be cute. It's like, well, he'll quicken your mortal body. Yes, he will, but not to sin. You, you guys are so cute. You guys are a bunch of sweethearts. You know that? <laughs> you really are. Uh, sweet sugar britches. Yeah, let's continue. Okay? But what I do that I will do that I may cut off them, cut off occasion from them, which desire occasions, occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. The Christian, the fakes, like the antinomianist, the Calvinist, okay, and the Pentecostal, and go on down the line, okay? They're seeking occasion. <laughs> For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, Bravo! Yeah. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Yeah, you Pentecostal guys out there, it's like, you've seen it. Yeah, you sure, you sure have. Yeah, angel of light? Yeah, you have not seen Jesus. You have not. Yeah, in your dreams or whatnot, you haven't. Hmm. Therefore, it is no great thing if, if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose then shall be according to their works. Hey, sweetheart, is salvation in the present tense? Do you continually have to believe? I, I, I'd like to, I, I'm not going to watch, but I, I'd like to hear the response to that. I would. I, I'd like to hear the response to that. Because I know where you got that from. You know? I know where you got that from. It wasn't from Scripture. I know I know who you got that from. I'd like to hear the answer to that. Do you have to continually believe? Do you? Justifying yourself by your own belief? I wonder. Well, I wonder. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Now, Galatians 1, Galatians 1, verses 1 on to verse 10. See, the actual Jesus, okay, you love your enemies today by demonstrating truth or giving them truth. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But when someone doesn't want to hear the truth, the word of God, you are left with what? Your physical testimony, how you behave, which the Christian really, <laughs> okay? So, again, it comes down to which Jesus are you being presented? See, you want to believe in a Jesus who's this sugary, 
confectionery God who has no requirements, no nothing, just believe and say, come on, you know. But that's not the Jesus of Scripture. The Jesus of Scripture confronts you. That one thing you lack is what he's going to put his finger on like he did with the rich young ruler. Which is why Paul's speech was considered rude in comparison to those who received this fake Jesus. Beg your pardon? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Galatians chapter 1. Verses 1 out of verse 10. See, and herein lies the rub. The saint gives to you the actual Jesus. We believe the authorized version. Devils believe it, but they, they don't take it. It doesn't go from here to here. Okay, because they're working for the Vatican, of course. All right. But see, they're offering you this worldly Jesus. Therefore, you love that one because it's all about flesh. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, whom, who raised him from the dead. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia, Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from the, this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. But, you know, certain blends within Christianity is like, hey, live it up, don't worry about it. It's supposed to be different. To whom be glory forever and ever, amen. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. It's, it's not even, it's not another gospel. There's only one gospel. But see, all the blends of Christianity offer you a myriad. Which one? Yeah, whatever you feel like. You are your own standard, buddy, sweetheart. Okay? Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Yea, hath God said. That's where it begins, the Genesis. Yea, hath God sent. said. Oh, you got Catholic. Calvinist, German Catholic, Presbyterian, Episcopalian, Methodist, uh, 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 Pentecostal, Baptist, uh, King James Bible believing Christianity, uh, you know, Free Grace, which is kind of a seasoning on a on a dead stake, if you will. Okay. <laughs> but though we are an angel from heaven, and an angel of heaven. You know, you read in the Apocrypha here in the book of Tobit, okay, about, oh, uh, not Gabriel, Raphael, I think it was, in the book of Tobit, who said to Tobit's kid to practice witchcraft in order to ward off a devil. <laughs> yeah, you, you, could, you, you could look that up for yourself. We even did a, we have, there's a video on the channel somewhere where we even talk about that. Okay, yeah. I think it was Raphael in the Apocrypha in the Book of Tobit who told Tobit's kid that, you know, take the liver from a fish and the smoke will ward off the devil. Witchcraft! So you got an angel from heaven telling someone to engage in witchcraft. Oh, and we wonder why Rome is so messed up. <laughs> uh, now how's your mother you know Rome not your biological one I don't go there but you know your real mother Rome uh, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you let it be accursed see also the inference there is that an angel from heaven is not going to preach Contrary to the scriptures. The Pentecostal, they get all these visions. An angel came. Jesus spake to me, blah, blah, blah. And yet, their dreams and visions are never rightly divided. And usually contrary to scripture. Because they're not rightly divided. Okay. For do I not persuade men or God? 
Oh, no, there. Oh, we're going to look at that, so I'm not going to say that yet. Okay, First Corinthians chapter five. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay, or Second Corinthians. Excuse me. Actually, we're coming to that very quickly. All right, but, but, for do I now persuade men or God? Christianity is about persuading men. For their little G God, Satan. Or do I seek to please men? I'm not here to please you. Christianity. It's, here. it's all about you. She's decked her bed with coverings of tapestry from Egypt. Let us solace ourselves in loves. And all the while offering you a love that is actually hate. For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Because see, Christ was confronting. Jesus Christ is confronting. Okay? He demonstrates love, not in the present tense, meaning he loves unconditionally the Christ-rejecting sinner. No, 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 no. It is showing love to warn you of the truth. We already looked. He loved him. Warning him, it's like one thing you lack. Go do that and come and follow me. Okay? Before the death, burial, and the resurrection, the law was still binding. Yes, it was. Okay? All right? But the point is, Jesus Christ is going to confront that one thing you lack. But the Jesus Christ that is offered to you of Christianity and their love, it's going to bolster you up in that love that isn't true love. Lust lasciviousness, covetousness, whatever. Okay? Now, 2 Corinthians 12. Two verses. 2 Corinthians 12, verses 14 and 15. And here it is for the saint. Here it is for the saint. See, the Christians... They don't grow in truth. They grow in philosophy. They grow in emotion. They grow in their feelings. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I, not, for I seek not yours, but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. Now hold up, think about this. To a Christian who we are saying, the Lord has opened the door, it's like, dude, you, you need to stop that. You need to get away from that. That's going to kill you. That's going to poison your mind. We're, we're, we're the savor of death unto death unto them. Because we're raining on their parade, right? Oh, how many of you have, you know, you're being too extreme. Jesus wouldn't, you're Jesus. But, to Jesus who is, he's very confronting. Okay? Okay? Your little Jesus, he's a little patsy. He, he just loves you so much. He loves you unconditionally. God loves you. Yeah, right. He loves you so much and he's going to be leading you into hell. Yeah. I think perhaps maybe no, my dear friend. Okay? But see, the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. How many of you, in witnessing, you, when people come to you, and you ask me questions through email, and you, you ask, and we go through scripture, and then you fire back, I was like, why are you, why are you being like that? Like, Dude, you asked. <laughs> you asked. What does the scripture say about so-and-so topic? Well, I, I was like, why are you? It's like, wait a minute. Why does that offend you? Oh, you want to keep that. You want it. You want your sin. You want a God. You want a Jesus who's going to justify what you want. So just believe and receive this, sweetheart. Just believe and receive and go listen to the talk show. <laughs> With virtually zero uh, script, scriptural refutation or cherry picked without giving the proper context or uh, at all. <laughs> 
<laughs> see, see, people like that, they can get away with these things because of the generalized ignorance of Scripture. Because, hey, a Christian, that's the perfect word of God. The originals. Oh, okay. here we go again. And, and some of these guys even purport to be King James Bible even Christians. <laughs> but it's by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. Grace through faith in the kingdom. <laughs> that one, I, I, I really, I, I, I am full of wonder when I hear some of you guys actually say that. That during the kingdom of heaven, it's by grace of faith. Your audience is so... The audience you're targeting, who doesn't know that, and you're the ones who are supposed to tell them that, that it all works, but yet, you're, you know... Because you got an agenda. You want people to take the mark of the beast and damn so many to hell because you're working for Satan, the Vatican, and stuff like that. It's full of wonder. Backtracking now to um, 2 Corinthians 11, 31 and 32. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait, no. 1 Corinthians, excuse me. 1 Corinthians 11, 31 and 32. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. That we should not be condemned with the world. And herein where these guys, all oh, they'll judge saints. But when the thing is turned on them, don't judge me. See, and brother, we've talked about this. When I'm pointing at you, there are three fingers pointing at me. And we are commanded in Scripture to examine ourselves, to prove ourselves. And that's a, it's, that's a daily thing, self-examination. It's not a one-and-done thing, okay? Are you continual? It's not saving yourself. No, okay? You need to do self-checkups, okay, every once in a while. You should do it every day. That's why reading the Scriptures searching the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. And see, when you examine yourself daily in the light of scripture, I, I'm going to do the same to you, because I do it to me first. And see, these guys who are very quick, don't judge me, only God can judge me. Oh boy, here we go again. Judge not. They have a problem with judgment. <laughs> you know, in the search section, if you have like a uh, laptop, the little magnifying glass, just put judge or judgment and go off of there. Okay? Since uh, Ever since I started doing the hashtags, that's really been helpful for finding things. Okay? I'm not going to go through all the videos and do that, though. <laughs> that would be very laborious. Okay? Or laborious, I should say. Excuse me. Okay? But yeah, uh, the false the point at others, but Hey, bloke, you won't point it back at yourself. They refuse to do judgment. They refuse to do judgment. Even though they'll condemn you, they refuse to do judgment. Now, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. See, the God that is offered to you of Christianity, this sugary confectionery, sweet, sweetie pie, uh, is not the real Jesus. Now remember, as a saint, that type of love is there within Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It is. But see, what Christianity wants to remove, that Jesus that we're supposed to fear. There is no fear of God before their eyes. You stupid antinomianists. Okay, all of you, y'all, there's no fear of God before your eyes. Because you are your own God. Well, you've got the fear, right? You, you know, just believe and receive. God loves you unconditionally, right? <laughs> but, see, we are fear of the Lord. And see, these, these sweethearts, they're, they're really cute. They'll say things, well, you know, fear of the Lord is just for the Jews. Paul never talked about fear of the Lord. 
See, the fear of the Lord is clean. Fear of the Lord is right. They'll say, well, that was, that was you know, that's not applicable. We, how are you supposed to uh, love someone that you're afraid of? I know, uh, in, in a society, in a culture that is deprived of the father in the household and replaced it with two fathers or two mothers, okay, whatever. All right, um, those of you who grew up with a father, you love your father, right? And when you messed up, you were afraid of your father because he was going to get out that leather belt and blister your rear end bloody, right? You loved him, but you were afraid of him for that nature. But you loved him, right? Now, I, I know uh, this was this, this Generation Z, whatever that nonsense is. I know that's foreign to you. But, you know, there was a time, even in Jesuit-controlled America, that people were brought up at least with that construct of a family unit. You know, you love your father. But yet, if you, it's like, you wait till you get home. And our father, he, he, he won't. He's going to blister them buttocks. <laughs> He's going to blister them buttocks of yours. But see, you loved him, but you were afraid of him. And see, Jesus Christ, who is our Father, okay, the, the thing about this, okay, and we're going to look at this in Hebrews. Um, you, you fear your earthen father, but love him, but yet your heavenly Father, you're not supposed to fear him, Hmm. I, I smell something. I smell a Jesuitical satanic agenda. But first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verses 9 on to 12. Wherefore we labor... That we, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Now, this is not talking salvifically. Okay, when you go the way of the cross, broken of your self-righteousness, taking responsibility, not hiding under the umbrella, we're all sinners. Okay, fearing the Lord and calling upon his name. And see, you stupid, vile, vomitous, antinomianists, that's foreign to you because you're the greater. Calling on the lesser, your little G God. Okay? This is not talking about salvific salvation. The way you serve God reflects Him. And you, you devils, you you reflect your little G God quite well, I must admit. Bravo there, sugar pie. Okay? Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Who's the book of Corinthians written to collectively? Saints. Okay. Judgment seat of Christ, you look it up yourself, is only, is only for us saved people. Okay. Judgment seat of Christ is only for saved people. Not everybody is going to be, uh, everybody eventually who is, doesn't go to the judgment seat of Christ, you know, the redemption of the purchased possession, that kind of thing, okay? But the judgment seat of Christ is for saints, okay? Not Christians, okay? For saints, saved people, all right? Not everybody is going to appear at the judgment, only saved people are, okay? So when he says we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, He's, in context, talking about those all who are saved. Okay? That everyone may receive of the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. We are made, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Terror of the Lord. That's not fair, Brent. Oh, no, you be quiet. Verse 12. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. You know, the ones who put on the facade. 
That's why I think a lot of you guys hide your faces. Okay? Even though you had videos where you showed your faces before. Uh, but presently, yeah, hide your faces. Huh. Hmm. That, that, that one, you know, you, you guys talk about, oh, you're cowards and you're so brave. Why don't you start showing your face? Huh? There, there are those of you out there who have and just aren't doing that. Fine. Okay? But there are some out there who, in any of their videos, even though you can see the, the people have thing on their face, they don't show their faces. Huh. Why is that, I wonder? Brad, you didn't. Well, you're right, I didn't. Here I am. I know, put this under the uh, kitchen cabinet to scare the roaches away, right? I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I'll give you that, okay? <laughs> I will. All right. Um, Second Corinthians 7, verse 1. Paul never talked about the fear of God. I've encountered that in Rome, especially with the hyper grace um, people. The, 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 those guys are crazy. Especially, you know, they're all antinomianists anyway. These free grace, hyper grace idiots. Whatever. They're not idiots. Some of them are, but they're not all idiots, okay? But Paul never did. That was for the Jews. Paul never talked about it. Uh, 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. But see, you, you get a hold of one of these disgusting free grace uh, pukes. Don't worry about it. You, you shouldn't, but don't worry about it. Just, just go ahead. <laughs> God loves you. Ain't you so sweet? Ain't you precious, huh? Okay. Oh, oh we're not done. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, I'll, I'll mock these guys all day and not long. All day um, and all day, all day long. I will. <laughs> I will. I'm not afraid of these guys. Are you crazy? Look at what Elijah did. He mocked the prophets. Okay? <laughs> Ephesians 5, 11 under 21. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Or rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are approved are made manifest by the light. Who is the light? Oh, that angel of light or that true light that lighteneth the world? Ah. <laughs> For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. And there, right there is the reference for John 3, right there. I think that is. Anyway. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Again, the Christian is like, you, you shouldn't do that, but hey, don't worry if you do. You're puffed up. You don't mourn. Okay? You're, you're, you're proud. It's like, we're, we're looking how righteous we are. We're not judging you. It's when you need to come on. We love you. Uh, if you love them, you'd be like, look, you need to get away from us because your sin can infect others. And you need to get out of here. You need to go to the Lord. Get away. Get away. We ain't playing. Get out of here. That is true love. And see, Christianity calls that hate. Unless, of course, you're a saint who gets your eyes open and be like, uh, uh, hey, 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 uh, there's a redemption of the purchase possession. Hey, they weren't saved by grace through faith in every dispensation. Yeah, blasphemy! Or, uh, hey, one God comprises the spirit, soul, and body. <laughs> then they'll get rid of you. Yeah, because you're preaching truth, see? And by the way there, sweetheart, it was Lennon who said, um, not John Lennon, um, call the enemy what you are. 
and always speak the opposite of the truth. Okay, sweetheart? Okay? You're a talk show host. You should have known that, sweetie pie. <laughs> oh, boy, wouldn't you and I have a wonderful conversation if we ever met face to face? I think it would be like with me and the bloke. One of us would probably die. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway, I beg your pardon, brother. Brad, that's so unchristian. You're right. I'm not a Christian. Wherefore, verse 17, Be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Drunk with wine. You can drink wine. Don't get drunk. It's right there. Okay? Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord. How can you have melody with Christian rap? How can you have melody with heavy metal Christian music? You know, hmm. more on that later. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another, charity, in the fear of God. It's twice, three actually times that Paul mentioned fear of the Lord, fear of God. Oh boy, Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, 12 on to 16. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That doesn't mean that we're working to be saved. We're saved, sealed until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved if you go the way of the cross. Not, you know, being the, uh, the higher, calling the lower down to you like the antinomianist believes, okay? S stupid, okay? But Jesus lives within us to save saint. We are to work out what he has put in himself. That's what that means, okay? It's not working to be saved or stay saved or anything like that, okay? For it is God, and it says so right there. <laughs> it says so in verse 13, okay? What it's talking about. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. See, verse 13 this explains verse 12. It's like, what, is that? Well, what does that mean? Read 13, okay? Do all things without murmurings and disputings. What were we reading to? 16. That ye may be blameless and harmless to sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. We are reading on to verse 16. Yes, fear and trembling. Mm. Being blameless and harmless. Hmm. And see, we represent the Christ who is, the Jesus Christ who is, who is confronting, who will put his finger on that one thing you lack right away. He doesn't waste time like that. But see, the Jesus offered to you of Christianity is totally contrary to that. He wants to, you know, uplift your flesh, your sweetheart. That's why so many of you love that fake Jesus. Okay? Now, okay, now, dude, listen. Paul was all about the fear of the Lord. Okay, we just looked at one, two, three, four incidences. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be a staff. How about four? Okay? This nonsense, well, only the Jews should fear the Lord. <laughs> Again, this concept was there to train children onto Christ in a way with the family construct because they loved the fa their father, but yet they were afraid of their father when they messed up. 
But here in America, hey, you can have two mommies. You can have two daddies. So two fathers, huh? But there again, where is the nurturing of the mother? See, a father and a mother. Unfortunately, in some legitimate case, one dies of cancer. One gets uh, killed in a car accident or whatever. Okay, that happens. Okay, but in um, the American society and also in the world, um, you know, it's true. A father and mother is not needed so per se to raise a child, but for that child to have a better chance to have a father and a mother. Okay. I was raised without a father, okay? I know many of you were raised without a father. I know that some of you were raised without a mother, okay? I do, all right? But see, God would want it to be that way. But then again, with a father and mother, but then again, there are legitimate circumstances where that is not the case, okay? Okay, but see, what you gotta be aware of, especially here in America, about how they give to you, it's like, well, it's not even needed. Well, you can raise a child without a father and a mother. Or with just a mother or just a father. Yes, you can. But see, that ingredient that is supposed to be there of that unit of father and mother will be lacking. Because you know what? Even though with these, uh, some of these sodomites who are very effeminate, very woman-like, uh, there are a couple out there who are more women than women seem to be. There's that's still that nurturing thing of a woman is not there because guess what? They're not a woman! No matter how you want to mess with the, the gender thing, you idiots. And, and uh, those guys, and, and I ran into a woke individual uh, yesterday in a comment section. I left it alone. But uh, anyway, anyway, uh, you know, look, you may call yourself whatever doesn't make you what uh, you are because you say you are okay doesn't make you the thing in and of itself okay look you're born with certain chromosomes making you a male science you're a man you're born with certain chromosomes of a woman you're a woman okay that's science that's somewhere in the community section okay where a science guy and it, and this one uh, woman pretending to be a guy calling them cis men or whatever it's like, why are you going to the science of all this? And the science guy's like, the science. Even he's like, kid, you're stupid. Okay? All right? Anyway, I'm sorry for that little rabbit trail. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. All right, here, here's, here's a basic one, okay? And this, is, and this is the ones that people, you know, when they, those guys who say, well, Paul never talked about fear of the Lord. You, you must be pretty willfully ignorant of Scripture. Okay? Or they say, well, the fear of the Jews, the fear of the Lord, that was just for the Jews. Okay? <laughs> just like the, these guys who say, being born again is for the Jews. There, there are people out there that actually say that. And they, they do the same thing. Paul never mentioned being born again. You're right. He just defined it. You're right. You're right. He did. Again, the Lord never said, I am God. He did. He said, I am. He never said, I am the Messiah. He never said that. He just said, like, he who speaketh unto thee. Okay? Come on. Come on. People, wake up. Wake up. First Peter. First Peter chapter 2, 13 on 17. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. People will come to this, especially here in America, will to justify ungodly laws. Abortion is a good example. So it's been left up to the states now, okay? But, you know, uh, abortion, you know, legalized murder, okay? Oh, well, for the child, for the, for the mother's sake or whatnot. 
It's like when, when a woman becomes a child, guess what? Their life is no longer their own. Okay? And what mother would not choose their own child? There are a lot out there, apparently. Okay? But that's just an example. Okay? God is not for murder. Okay? He isn't. He isn't. Okay? For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free, and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. And see, the, this uh, liberty that Christianity has is exactly that. They use it for a cloak of maliciousness. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, Fear God, honor the king, honor the king. But you know what happens with all of this? Thank you, by the way, brother. Colossians chapter 2. Yea, hath God said. Yea, hath God said. Uh, verses 4 on to verse 8. In Colossians chapter 2. Thank you, brother. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. It, it's really interesting to hear antinomianists refute, try to refute truth with scripture. The, the, some do, they'll put like the, on the screen there, but they don't get really deep. And they use philosophy instead of scripture with scripture. It's a very, it's a different thing. It's like they'll, 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 some do. That, that idiot, Tom, does this. He'll put the thing up there and they'll talk about this verse, but they'll use philosophy and vain deceit. They'll use man's wisdom instead of comparing scripture. With, well, see, we're comparing scripture with scripture. That's what you do. These guys are philosophers. Okay? They are. Okay, they are. They don't get deep. They can only skim on the surface. They don't get deep. They're scripturally inept. That's why. They get what they get from their mother, Rome. Okay? Anyway. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, be joying, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therewith, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy, the love of man's wisdom. And vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, not after Christ. There is a Christ that is offered to you of the world, and there is a Christ who is. Which one? Which one, huh? Of course, that bit, that video is going to be in there. Now, here let's uh, let's let's address something that a lot of the heretics. Love to go to. One second. All right. Sorry about that. Now, we we just went through some scriptures talking about the fear of the Lord. Okay. Now, the devil heretic pond scum who wants to lead you to hell, who wants to refute, well, how are you supposed to love someone you're afraid of? Or how you fear, right? Oh, I've seen that, that Stephen Furkick guy you know, that, uh, that muscle guy and a lot of these Christians, you know, don't scare them. We're supposed to love them into the kingdom. The kingdom that Rome's building? <laughs> Give me a break. We're not building it. We already saw. This kingdom is not hence, from hence. Okay? We're not building a kingdom. Okay? A physical kingdom. Rome is. Okay? You hear these Christians? Don't scare them. Love them into the kingdom. What kingdom? 
there is the kingdom of God, which is spiritual, but the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And apart from evil is understanding. Paul was all about the fear of the Lord. And heretics will point out, you know, that, hey, you know, the fear of the Lord, you know, Jesus talked about fear of the Lord, you know, fear him. Why he didn't say fear me, I don't know. Okay? I don't know. But, you know, they'll point out, well, fear of the Lord is just for the Jews. We just believe and receive and with all this not all this sugary sweetheart stuff. But you know what they do? They go to first John four. Oh, how many of you have run into this? Who want to refute fearing the Lord? They go to verse 18 in John, 1 John 4. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. And they'll go to this and like, see, how God doesn't want you to fear him. You're not supposed to fear the Lord. Oh, really? What kind of fear is this talking about? Why don't we read this whole chapter? Can you handle it? Oh, that's too much scripture for you, isn't it? Let's read the chapter. What is this talking about? Starts out right away in 1 John 4. Beloved, believe not every lowercase spirit, a uh, lowercase s spirit, but try the lowercase s spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. See, the context here, right here, prophets, those who are preaching, those who are doing the teaching, okay? There are false teachers out there, false prophets, you know, like a talk show host and uh, Elmer from New York and uh, whatever, all kinds of false teachers out there, okay? So this is, in context, talking about those who are preaching this stuff, who are teaching, okay? Let's continue. Hereby know ye the capital S Spirit of God. Every lowercase s spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. In context to what? Those who are prophets. This is prophesying today. The Lord in me is speaking his word unto you through me. Okay? That is prophesying today. It's not Old Testament prophesying that the Pentecostals believe is still valid today. That's not how it is. We have the perfect revealed, given by inspiration, word of God, the perfect uh, standard here. We have the complete canon of scripture, okay? And every lowercase spirit, as spirit, that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. When you are your own standard, when you save yourself, is Jesus Christ is if you are your own standard? If you are saved by just your faith through his grace, not by his grace through our faith, they, you, you devils twist that. You've been caught. Okay? All right? But when you save yourself, is Jesus Christ? Hmm. I'll let you roll that one around in your head for a little while. Think about that. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The Father dwells within me and every saint. Okay? These guys of the world, they're, they're of their father, the devil. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Through philosophy and vain deceit, the traditions of men after the rudiments of the world. That was a good thing that you mentioned too, by the way, brother. Thank you. 
Therefore, they are of the world. Therefore, speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God, relational, not just up here, heareth us. He that, he that is not of God, heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Born of God. God who dwells within you. See, God's unconditional love is there for you to be had, but you've got to go the way he prescribed. Okay? Not boot the door and climb up some other way or save you yourself just because you think you are. Okay? All right? You go the way to the cross the way he has prescribed, and he saves you, the love of God is for you. Who will separate you from the love of God? No one, not even yourself, okay? He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. And we have already been looked at what true love actually is. Okay, a false love will cheer you on as you're running off of a cliff. That's the fake love. True love. We'll be like, hey, yo, throw, throw a rock at you, trip you up. It's like, hey, dude, stop. And you don't want to hear that. But see, we're showing love because, hey, we don't want you to go off the cliff. But those, uh, you know, love men of the kingdom, you sugar, you sugar britches out there, you sweetie pies, you, you sweethearts out there, you don't scare them. Love men of the kingdom, you're loving them into hell. That's not true love. It's not true love. That's hate. That is hate. Okay? You you want to show love to someone? Tell them the truth. Herein is love. Not that we loved God, but he but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. You know, John 3, 16. God so loved, past tense, that he gave. Okay? Beloved, if God so loved us, we, saved people, ought also to love one another. In context, saved people, loving one another. Okay? We show love to our enemies by telling them the truth. Okay? Okay? Someone who is not my brother I do not love as my brother. I will show you love by walking according to the scriptures and telling you the truth of scripture. Okay? That's how I demonstrate love. That's how we saints demonstrate love. But this love that doesn't judge, that has no requirements, that never is angry, that's not real love. That's hate. That's a hate that wants to see you dive headlong off of a cliff to your death. And that's what Christianity is. Death. Okay? Not death to yourself, but death to the truth. Because the faith that was once delivered onto the saints is death. Yes, death to yourself. That's where it begins. Because it begins at the cross. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us. And his love is perfected in us. Now, obviously John saw the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, right there at this time where he says, no man has seen God at any time. Okay? When Jesus Christ was on the earth, he said, he who seeth me seeth the Father. He called himself the Father. Okay? But see, the soul of the Godhead, no one can see. No one can see the soul. You saw Jesus Christ, you were seeing the Father. Jesus Christ is the Father. Amen, amen, amen. And see, he, when this was written, he died, buried, and rose again, and ascended back up to heaven. So when John said, no man has seen God at any time, he was being truthful. Okay? All right? And remember, John here was the last of the apostles who saw the Lord, of the apostles that saw the Lord. Okay? Remember that. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us. 
and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we the love hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he hath given us of his capital S Spirit, the Lord Himself, talking about the Holy Ghost, which he talks about in First John chapter three. He who is born of God. We've talked about that at length. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior with seven letters of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. Now see, the Trinitarian will be like, well, Jesus is the Son of God. Which one? The one in the middle of the three? Huh? Huh. Son of God, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Son of David, King of the Jews. Okay? What's the other one? Um, God manifest in the flesh. Oh, I can't remember it all. Um, the three the three things. The God, um, oh. Son of, ah, that's what it is. Son of man, excuse me, excuse me. The Son of man. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Son of man. Son of God, God manifest in the flesh. Son of David, King of the Jews, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Sorry, I had to re remember that, okay? That's, that's what that is. So, the Son of God, God manifest in the flesh. Son of man, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Son of David, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, okay? So, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, that he is God the Father, meaning Son of God, Son of God, okay? Son of God, God was manifesting, manifesting the flesh. Son of man, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? All right? And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us, God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Okay? Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this, pay attention, world. In this world. Now, verse 18. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Question. We've read the context. What is this fear talking about? Is it the fear of God? No. So are we in this world. It's a reference onto the fear of the world. The fear of man. Okay? It's talking about the fear, worldly fear. Okay? That's what it's talking about. Fear of man. It's not talking about the fear of God. We've just read the context. It's not talking about the fear of God. Where it says here, there is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Afraid of the world? Afraid of the things of the world? Afraid of man? You fret men? Hmm. I don't fret men. Do you? I don't. I. I, I don't fret men. I'm not. A, I'm not scared of a man. God forbid. God forbid. God, God forbid. I'd be uh, afraid of a man who's just as frail as I am. Maybe not as frail, but who is a spirit, soul, and body? Whose body was made of the earth? Okay. This is, talking, this, is, this is not talking about the fear of God. It's talking about the fear of man, the fear of the world, that kind of thing. Let's finish this. We love him because he first loved us. And see? See that context in 17 on the 19? If any man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this is the commandment we... That, and this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Same thing equates what we already mentioned about how 
you know, people who, children who have a father on earth, they love their father, but when they mess up, they're afraid of him, afraid of what he's going to do, his judgment, and getting their uh, rear end blistered, right? And love your brother. There are brethren out there, saved brethren, who I don't like. <laughs> they don't like me. But I love them because they are my brother or my sister. Okay? There are, there are brethren and some sisters. Uh, none of which whom I've met, you know, the sisters I've met, that we've met, you know, they, praise the Lord. But there are those out there who are saints who I don't like. Who don't like me. But when push would come to shove, if they needed, they're like, hey, Brad, I, I, I have no other, I, can you, doors open, brother. I don't like you. You don't like me. But we have the same father, and I love you. Our doors open. Come on. Okay. Love. Love for one another. Okay. And you're not my brother if you say you are. Okay, you are because you say you are, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> say you are, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Up the dosage there, buddy. All right. And, of course, with that, Proverbs 29, about verse 18 again. It's not talking about the fear of God. What is it talking about? Here's a scriptural reference for you. Proverbs 29. This one verse. Verse 25. Proverbs 29, verse 25. Fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made safe. Matthew 16. Fear of man. Matthew 16, verse 23. Huh. Matthew 16, 23. Ah, where are you? But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> if they were looking forward to the cross, why, hey, Catholic, why would your Pope Peter say in verse 22, Then Peter took him, began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he was looking forward to the cross. He knew, according, hey, if he was looking forward to the cross, why did he say that? They weren't looking forward to the cross until it happened. They had no knowledge of it. Or else... Paul in Ephesians 3 is lying. Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou savest not, savorest not the things that be of God, but those things that be of men. And I forget where it says this in Scripture, but it says, The earth hath he given unto the sons of men. So, in 1 John 4, 18, about talking about fear, it's not talking about the fear of God. It's talking about the fear of man. Talking about the fear of man. How can ye believe, ye that seeketh honor one from another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? And you are they which justify yourselves among men. Uh, you are those who, instead of butchering that, uh, Luke 16, 15. Luke 16, 15. Okay. Luke 16, 15. Mm. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. But God knoweth your hearts. Oh, he sure does. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verses 3 and verse 14. I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance, the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice. And I am persuaded, that is, 
that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that, that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. What is he talking about? The fear of the Lord? No. Because as we have already looked at, if, they was, if Paul was talking against the fear of the Lord with that verse, then whoa! We would already have a glaring contradiction, wouldn't we? Again, what, what fear is he making reference unto? Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. He's talking about spirit of fear that comes from the world. You know, the fear mongering, like with Trump getting shot, and the, the talk about World War III and all this, you know, the <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. Okay, spirit of fear. Okay, uh, one of the times that uh, Brother Alexander B. Hartley was up here, we were at the Wally World doing some tracting, and he even said, he even quoted to someone, uh, 2 Timothy chapter uh, 1, verse 7, where he said, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Love. 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 Okay? It's not talking about, uh, he's not talking against the fear of God, no, but the fear of the world, and love, a true love that demonstrates truth, which we have already addressed. Who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death, and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. It is finished. Jesus Christ is our hope. Our faith is on, in, if you will, Jesus Christ, not in our own faith. Devil. Okay? Hold fast that form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us good thing and there is none good but God Holy Ghost the Lord is that spirit okay Isaiah 8 Isaiah 8 Isaiah 8 just two verses 12 and 13 say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. They fear the world. Christianity fears the world. Hey, remember the psychological operation that happened a couple years ago? And, you know, the Jesuit government said shut down the church buildings? What happened? Huh? Huh? Are you Christians afraid to witness and preach? Huh? Unless the government gives you the okay? Verse 13. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself and let him be your fear. And let him be your dread. Whether, whether it is better to hearken unto you or unto God, <laughs> you decide. Then they go to, you know, what we looked at in Peter. It's like, uh, submit yourself to every ordinance of man. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> and do contrary to what his, what his word says. And God's okay with that. You, you go off someplace, man. You go off someplace. Okay? You, you, go, you go run along. Psalm 56. Psalm 56. Psalm 
Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. Fear man, fear the world. Okay, they are of the world, therefore the world heareth them. Okay? Pardon. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up. For they be many that fight against me, O thou most high. Yeah, and a man's enemies will be they of the, his own house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. And see, that's what's being talked about in 1 John 4, 18. Not the fear of the Lord. Okay? Every day they rest my words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps when they wait for my soul. Shall they escape by iniquity? In thine anger cast down the people of God. Thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? Three books. Three books. My personal favorite is a uh, video that the Lord gave, ever gave me to do. When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. In God will I praise his word. and the Lord will I praise his word. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You're supposed to base your faith you believe what the scriptures tell you about the Lord. And because of the scripture that teaches you faith on our Lord Jesus Christ. See, our faith is on Jesus Christ. But we learn of Christ through his word. So we praise his word who teaches us of the true Jesus Christ. And teaches us how to have faith. Okay? In God I have put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee. Thank you, pardon. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling? That I may walk before God in the light of the living. Psalm 57, verses 4 and 5. My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. <laughs> First Peter, chapter 5. You knew how we were going there. Some of you, I, I sent out notes for this to several brethren. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Let's read verse 9. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. <laughs> My soul is even among lions. And I lie even among them that are set on fire. <laughs> Destined for hell. Romans 3. The most hated portion of scripture. Onto the pond scum. Dung filled. Antinomianist. Free grace devil. The most hated portion of scripture. Because it's personal. Romans 3, 10 on to verse 18. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. There are, they are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit, the poison of asps. It's under the lips whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Praise that he isn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. 
And the way of peace have they not known. Why? There is no fear of God before their eyes. Oh, there's another mention of the fear of God by Paul. And again, like we like we already looked at, you know, if Paul was talking against the fear of God, then we would have all kinds of contradictions, wouldn't we? Okay? We're supposed to fear the Lord. We're not supposed to fear man. We're not supposed to fear this world or what the world may do unto us. Okay? And see, Satan works in that realm of the world. Okay? Because for judgment's sake, he has been, you know, he's the little G-God of this world. Okay? And James, of course, this James chapter 3. And, <laughs> hey, guess what? I have to watch my mouth sometimes. So do you. So do you. <laughs> oh, I, I never offend with my mouth. Really? Really, huh? James 3, verse 6. Ah, 5 and 6. Even so is so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. <laughs> My soul is among lions. I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. And you can also read in Proverbs 30 about, you know, there's a generation whose jaw teeth are knives and stuff like that. Didn't that that into there. Okay? Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13, verses 1 and 3. 1 on to verse 3. A wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. And see, part of true love involves rebuke. Gently, you don't have to be a jerk about it, but true love involves that. That's something that Christianity wants to avoid unless they're trying to rebuke the actual saints. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressor shall eat violence. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. But he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. And verses 24 on to verse 25. He that spareth his rod hateth his son. But he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. The righteous eateth to the satisfying of his soul, but the belly of the wicked shall want. See, the love that is being offered to you of Christianity is not a true love. It's hate. The only time that anything comes up with their love is when they want to try to refute the saint who preaches to you the true Christ from the Scripture. That's the only time you see any of this uh, animosity or venom from these Christians when you, the saint, with the scriptures refuting their false Christ and their false religion, their other gospel, their other Christ. Okay? Hebrews 12. Now look at that. He that spareth his rod hateth his son. But he that loveth him, chasteneth him betimes. Loveth. See, and again, to these Christians, to the God, that, uh, the little G God that's offered to you by the flavors of Christianity, it's not the true God, and the love is actually hatred. Hebrews 12, 5 unto 11. Hebrews 12, 5 unto 11. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. 
for whom for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Now see, the Lord will chasten us so we are not uh, with the world, which we already looked at. He'll chasten us so that we're not condemned with the world. Okay? We already looked at that. See, he chastens us for our benefit. But God will chasten the lost, not for their benefit, for, but for their destruction. Okay? you got to remember that. All right? God only chastens his own. God only chastens his own for their betterment. But he will chasten the lost for their destruction. Remember that. Okay? If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? And see again, that thing of the father, you love your father, but you're afraid of him to, and his chastening. And see, I've, heard, I've run into it. How are you supposed to love someone you're afraid of? You don't know. You want to know? No, you don't? Okay, then. Go away. Go to hell. God loves you. And have your best life now. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards, and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father, capital F, of lowercase s, spirits, and live? How are you supposed to uh, love someone you're afraid of? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he for a prophet, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Stop it. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Verse 11 is key. You and I, saints, I can't see the chastening that you're going through as you can't see mine. But what you can see, because we are to be fruit inspectors, you can see the peaceable fruit of righteousness that comes from God's chastisement. That you can see. That you can see. It's like, okay, that guy got, that, there's a brother who has gotten chastened by the Lord and it's yielding the peaceable fruits of righteousness. See, that is where you can judge them by their fruits. You know, know them by their fruits. Excuse me. You'll know them by their fruits. The fruit, uh, the peaceable fruit of righteousness after the chastisement. You, you ain't going to see my chastisement, nor am I going to see yours. But you're saying afterwards, peaceable fruit of righteousness. That we can see. We are to be fruit inspectors. Okay? And Philippians 3, Philippians 3, Philippians 3, okay? And, and hold on, let me, let's get back to Proverbs 13, uh, because I, I, I took my place out. <laughs> Proverbs 13. He, the righteous eat at verse 25. The righteous eateth to the satisfying of his soul, but the belly of the wicked shall want. Philippians 3, 17 on verse 19. Brethren, be followers together of me. Mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. Oh, yeah. That's, a, that's why these antinomianists are such a, such a wicked, devilish, their free grace antinomianism is the most dangerous heresy, I believe, of these last days. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and I'll tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Yeah, die to self. 
whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Again, listen to some of how these guys talk, what they talk about, with no shame. There's no fear of God before their eyes. And Romans 1, verses 15 and 16. Then we'll be done. Romans 1, 15 and 16. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also. See, saints, we preach the God who is. And the God who is is confronting. The God who is is going to bring to light those things of darkness that are, that are in you. And he does that the way of the cross which he has elected. Dear friend, the love just like the grace that is offered to you of Christianity is not true love nor is it true grace. It is hate. Beware. Especially watch out for these guys who said, God loves you. You, you, you saw. Okay. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, please keep... <laughs> oh, things are... Things are getting rough around here. Please keep us in your prayers. Thank you very much. We love you. See you in the next video.